Tim, um, so interested in talking to you today uh, because it's been a couple of days and so you've been able to process this news. I loved your tweet when you put that out about it. Um, it's brave. Um, it, it may work. It may not, you said. And then you listed that you wanted a Bledisloe win in two years, a Rugby World Cup semi-alliance tour in 2025, uh, those wins to justify it. So a couple of days later, what are your thoughts today? Yeah, I'm not asking for much, am I? Uh, but yeah, I think that uh, I think Eddie Jones, when he does come in, you know, to coach the Wallabies, he he drives success and he wants success from the players individually, but also as a group as well. And you know, I do I do feel for Dave Rennie. I thought Dave did a very good job um, with the culture and the standards and also the values in playing in a gold jersey for the Wallabies. And um, a really sad way to go out. But I would have loved to see him have a crack at the World Cup, but, um, you know, Rugby Australia board decided elsewhere. Yeah, so but did it come as a huge shock or surprise to you, or, 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 or had you heard whispers? Did, was, this, was this pending? Um, I, I'd heard whispers that potentially Eddie Jones was inter- interested to coach the Wallabies again. I thought it might have started on the 1st of November this year, um, after the World Cup, give Dave Rennie opportunity to get a lot of injured players back into the team. You know, guys like Samu, Karevi, and uh, Quade Cooper, all these players he was waiting on. Um, I think he went through 52 players in 2022. So it uh, would have been nice to see what Dave could have done with that team, but we won't know that now. So um, I've got a great opportunity. I think what Dave, when he's leaving Eddie Jones, is a really good team that is on the verge of something special if you get some players back. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the big question, isn't it? Uh, you know, I mean, there's a, a, a small player pool to choose from, uh, you know, I mean, compared to other sports in Australia, compared to other rugby player nations and things, uh, you know, and, and, and the injuries weren't Dave Rennie's fault or you know, maybe it was training methods, I don't know. But, I mean, you can't really tag him with that, can you? And then, of course, when you get a narrow loss in Melbourne to, to the All Blacks, the French game, the Irish game, I mean, could any other coach have done any better or got you any, any closer or turned those games into wins? Well, it's funny because the last three Wallaby coaches have all been sacked. And, um, you know, you look at Michael Checker, uh, Ewan McKenzie, and, of course, now Dave Rennie. I think we, as Wallaby fans, we think, oh, we'll change the coach and and we're going to win more matches. And and that may be the case. But uh, I think for for Dave, you know, that that loss in Melbourne to the All Blacks hurt. Um, The loss against France by a couple of points, loss against Ireland hurt. But probably the big one was you lose against Italy after making 12, 13 changes to the team. That was probably the, the nail in the coffin, unfortunately, for um, for Dave. It wasn't his fault on the field, but I think he made too many changes up against a pretty good Italian team. Tim Horan is with us. He's a former double-time, two-time World Cup winner for the Wallabies, nine Stan Sport rugby commentator. And always appreciate your time, mate. I mean, in terms of the PR side of it, Eddie Jones, he, he provides interest, he provides excitement, he, he, he provides quotes at press conferences. He also is a bit of a change agent and that, you know, he always seems to do something relevant in the first year. How much of all of that were Australian rugby thinking about? I mean, Dave Rennie, whatever he is, he isn't the personality that Eddie Jones is. No, that's right. I think what Eddie does is, you know, he starts at 5 o'clock in the morning, he finishes at 10 o'clock at night, he lives and breathes the game, and, um, you know, he, he always finds time, as all the other Wallaby coaches have, going out to junior rugby clinics, being part of that, going to, um, you know, charity events and, and speaking, you know, obviously these different charity events, and Dave Rennie's done that, Eddie Jones will, will do that. I think Eddie will, will probably put the game on the map a little bit more off the field, than Dave has, and that's not a criticism of Dave. That's just Dave's personality. I no problem with that. And I thought, I thought Dave did a great job with the Wallabies and the environment that uh, he had at the time. But I think what Eddie Jones will add, it, he'll add that opportunity for our code up against NRL and AFL. Tim, going back to you know what you want, and you made, you made a joke at the start about you're not asking for too much. But you know, I mean, well, you know, you've also got to aspire to excellence, mate, don't you? A Bledisloe Cup win, if you'd won that match in Melbourne, who knows? It would have changed completely with the All Blacks on the back foot at Eden Park. A Rugby World Cup semi-final, when you look at the draw for Australia, you've got Wales in the pool. It could be, you know, a collision course with Argentina or England. That's not actually out of the question, mate. No, definitely not. And, you know, I was then when I wrote that, I was thinking, what would Eddie Jones be wanting to do? And Eddie Jones wants to win the World Cup. So... If he gets to a semi-final, lose a semi-final, that's probably, you know, for him, that, that'd be a negative. But, um, yeah, definitely a semi-final's more than, you know, achievable, even with Dave Rennie at the at the helm. So, 
Um, the next the one, next one, obviously, the Bledisloe Cup. Haven't had it for 20 years. That's what Eddie Jones will be looking to try and achieve in the next two, maybe three years or earlier. Um, and then the British and Irish Lions, that's huge. The three test matches in Australia in 25. Um, the All Blacks obviously know how hard it is to beat the British and Irish Lions. So that's something that if Eddie can do that in those next two and a half years, well, I think that um, they've made the right call. As pragmatic as it is, Wales, England, Australia, all ditching coaches a year out from the World Cup, all believing somebody else is going to come in. Contrast that with New Zealand and, and all the kerfuffle that was going on last year around Ian Foster. And, and, and that is just boiling away. It hasn't gone away, Tim. That's boiling away. But here in New Zealand, we've never done this with an all-black coach. No, I think, um, I think what Ian Foster's done, especially on the end-of-season tour, he understands the, what, what side he's got there and how good they are. And it, I still believe, in my opinion, that the All Blacks are favourites for the World Cup or should be favourites. And uh, it's probably good for the, the, the All Blacks. I think they currently sit third in the, in the world. That's probably good for them. They're not top favourites. So um, I think Ian Foster's done a great job. Uh, and where does that let now leave you know, Razor Robinson? Um, there was talk about potentially him coming to coach the Wallabies. And... You know, if Ian Foster gets the All Blacks to the final, um, it'd be probably Ian Foster's job to continue on if he wants to. Well, that, that's what you'd think, wouldn't you? I mean, and why wouldn't he if he wins it? I mean, this is why, you know, this kind of doesn't really come into the argument in New Zealand. I mean, everyone kind of is, 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 is assuming that, oh, at the end of the World Cup cycle, it is Scott Robertson's. But what, say, Fossey does win it, and he's, and he's a champion coach. Why wouldn't he want to go on? That's right. Totally agree. Um, you know, it's, he's done a great job so far. Yes, he had a couple of blips um, last year. Of course, that Ireland series, you know, was difficult, but you got the best team in the world, Ireland, at, at the moment. So, but I think New Zealand, um, the way they play the game, knockout footy probably doesn't suit them. Um, but I think World Cup, they've got a good draw and, you know, it's going to be a tough quarterfinal and semifinal for them. But get through that they'll be into the final no doubt as far as Eddie Jones goes he's also got responsibility for the Wallaroos program as well is that too much for one guy to, to actually handle um, it'd be interesting to see how it goes he's obviously not going to be head coach of the Wallaroos as far as I understand he's just going to um, manage the program of the Wallaroos I think that's quite, quite important because obviously we saw how successful the Wallaroos for our standards were in the World Cup last year in New Zealand and then there's another World Cup in a few years' time, and then, of course, we're going to host the Women's World Cup in 29. So we need to make sure that the Wallaroos in 29, which is a while away, but the build-up to that, that the Wallaroos make, definitely make the semi-final and have the ability to potentially make the final in our home you know, Women's World Cup. So that's what Eddie will be able to oversee that transition from where we were now to, to growing the, that sort of the women's game. All right, well, we thank you as always for your time, Tim. So just overall, you know, obviously your phone's been ringing off the hook. You've got a lot of feedback from old Wallaby mates, rugby fans, you know, every, every, everyone connected with the sport in the country. What's the overwhelming feeling about this? Oh, I think it's exciting. I think um, everyone's excited about what Eddie Jones can do for the code, can do for the Wallabies, can do for the Wallaroos, and it's a big job, but he's been there before and done that, and he's been very successful in World Cups, whether it's with, you know, Australia, whether it's with the South Africans in 2007, England as well. He knows how to beat the All Blacks, um, and but I do feel for Dave Rennie. I thought Dave Rennie did a really good job. It's unfortunate with the injuries that he had to take throughout the last sort of year or so, but um, it's a shame way for Dave to go out. And you know he did a great job for Australian rugby. And but yeah, it's exciting times. I think everyone's looking forward to seeing what Eddie Jones can deliver. Awesome talking to you. Thank you always for your time. Thoroughly appreciate it, Tim. Thanks, Martin.